Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk about skincare. And specifically, I want to go over some of the things that I keep in mind for maintaining healthy, glowy skin. I'm all about making sure that my skin is as healthy as possible. And over the last couple years, I've really done a lot of research and tried to refine a routine that really gives me that. So I want to share some of the things that I've learned over the past few years with you in hopes to hopefully give you some direction if you feel a little bit lost and overwhelmed like I did. And then also I'm going to share my routine in this video, but I will link all the products down below for you. And I encourage you to focus more on the steps and kind of what I'm telling you rather than the exact products that I'm using. Cause I think skincare is very personal and I think it definitely requires some trial and error to find what is going to be perfect for you. So with all of that said, let's get started. My first tip is definitely to listen to the experts. There is a lot of information out there right now. And I think one of the wonderful things about the internet is that everyone gets a voice, but that doesn't mean that every voice is going to be speaking your language. So one thing that I've really done differently over the last few years is target who I'm listening to when it comes to skincare specifically. And in order to do that, I have a few people that I follow here on YouTube that are active dermatologists or just skincare experts and I really trust their opinion and they tend to do things in a very factual, informative way that I really trust. So I recommend doing that for yourself, whether that's physically going to a dermatologist or watching some of these wonderful dermatologists that so graciously share their information here. I will link some of my favorites down below for you. And then make sure that you're focusing in on them when it comes to tailoring a skincare routine for yourself. Because skincare is something that has been very glamorized over the last couple of years. And I think that that's good because it encourages us to take care of ourselves. But I think the negative is that there's a lot of misinformation and a lot of really beautiful skincare that doesn't necessarily give you great results. So definitely start there. Next is that less is definitely more when it comes to me and my own personal skincare routine. And it's something that I've learned from listening to the experts. And it's something that's had really good results for me. So rather than layering on multiple steps, I find that my skin is a lot happier when I have a really simple routine of a couple steps that keep me cleansed, hydrated, and then targeted for my specific needs and whatever I'm trying to fix or keep consistent in my own skin. So I recommend that for you as well. I don't think that there's anything wrong with multi-step routines, but I've been a lot happier, not only with the time that I have, but also the amount of money that I'm able to save and then just my overall skincare results since I've really streamlined and minimized things. My next tip is that healthy, glowy skin definitely starts on the inside and it has everything to do with your health and looking after yourself. So I really encourage you to eat well, eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, exercise, find a routine that works for you and sweat as much as possible. I think it's really good for the skin. And then of course, drink a lot of water. I know there have been conflicting studies that suggest that drinking excessive amounts of water actually doesn't really do anything for your skin, but I always feel a lot happier when I'm hydrated. If you've seen any of my past videos, then you know that I'm a singer and so hydration is very important to me and I always feel healthier overall but certainly reflected in my skin as well when I am really conscious about maintaining my hydration. My next tip is to always wear sunscreen. Sunscreen is so important not only for preventing aging, it's definitely I think probably the number one thing that can prevent aging, aging but it's also just really important for maintaining the health of your skin. The sun can be really really damaging and it's not ideal to have it exposed to your skin all the time. So I really encourage you to find a sunscreen that works for you. There are so many beautiful variations and formulas out there now. We're really focusing in on that technology. So you're able to find things that blend in, don't leave a white cast, and things that can really keep you protected for a long period of time from the damaging rays of the sun. And then also along those same lines, I wear sunscreen every single day without fail. I put it on my face, my neck, and my hands. And it's always important to do that even if you're staying inside because there's this misconception that the sun can't cause damage if you're inside, but that's not true. And it can come through the window and definitely still impact you. 
And then also I've heard that we get a damaging rays from our cell phones and our laptops. So it's always important to wear sunscreen. And since I started wearing it regularly, I have almost no hyperpigmentation. It's something I used to struggle with a lot. I have far less acne because the sun isn't exacerbating my skin and it's just overall a lot healthier and happier. So definitely sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. So much like I'm a huge advocate for a really simple routine, I also think it's really important to only test one new product at a time. When I was first really starting to focus on skincare and I wanted a routine that was gonna give me beautiful glowy skin and something that I could rely on, I made the amateur mistake of trying a bunch of different things all at the same time. And since I have really reactive skin and I have asthma, I had a really negative allergic reaction to a lot of products. And it was hard for me to tell which one was causing the reaction because I was using 17 new things. So definitely, definitely always try one new thing at a time. Make sure you're starting with a very good base of a routine that is not irritating you at all, and then add one thing, see how that goes for a couple days, and then you'll be able to easily target what is causing a new reaction. Now, because I do have asthma and my skin tends to be really reactive and pretty sensitive, I like to avoid fragrance. I don't think fragrance is something you have to always avoid. And I know for me personally, there have definitely been fragranced items in the past that haven't irritated me, but I do think that generally speaking, avoiding fragrance has been a really good way for me to find skincare that's based on efficacy rather than glamour, and then also something that's been really helpful for maintaining my allergic reactions. So I don't get any redness or rashes, and I don't need in my inhaler, which is always good, and I think always makes me look healthier and feel healthier overall. And my last tip before I share my own personal skincare routine is to look for active ingredients that have real efficacy and actual long-term proof behind them. There's a lot of trendy ingredients, a lot of things that are hyped and of the moment, a lot of of glamorous ingredients, but very few when it really comes down to it that actually give you results. And I know for me personally, before I did blogging and YouTube full time, I did beauty and lifestyle public relations. And one of the key parts of my job was really finding ingredients that were going to be trendy and cool. So I really encourage you to look for clinical studies and actual lasting results when it comes to your skincare. And certainly when it comes to incorporating actives and things that are going to be targeting specific things in your routine, it's very important to look for that so that you're not wasting your time or your money. Now I want to share my own personal skincare routine. So this is catered specifically to my skin type, and that is sensitive slash reactive. I tend to get really red. And then also normal to oily. I have pretty normal skin. I get oily in the T-zone and then occasionally on my cheeks, especially when it's really hot outside. But for the most part, things are nice and balanced, especially now that I have this routine that works for me. And then also, this is definitely a routine focused on consistency and effect efficacy, but also a moderate price point. I, like everything, like to have high-low, so I'll save in some areas and then splurge in other areas. And I'm going to list all of the products that I've used down below for you because I have a couple that I rotate and then occasionally I'll get a recommendation and I'll swap that in after testing it. And so I'll put everything that I've used that's worked down below for me, along with a special note for anything that is specifically vegan or cruelty free because I don't have recommendations for every category unfortunately because I'm kind of struggling finding things that are working in all of those so please share your recommendations so now let's get into my exact routine and we're going to start with am i start every morning by washing my face i use a really gentle cleanser the same that i use morning and night and i will do a quick cleanse but specifically i like to wash my face for 60 seconds i actually count 60 seconds and then i wash it off with water 10 times and that makes a really big difference it sounds kind of tedious but now i I can't not do that. I saw that recommended in a video by a dermatologist that I follow here, and it's worked really well for me. So once my face is cleansed and dry, I will apply my moisturizer. Again, it's the same moisturizer that I use morning and night. Really gentle, really effective, and gives me healthy skin that feels really comfortable and doesn't feel too oily. And then once that's done, I will apply an eye cream. And eye creams are one of those things where I don't know that it's necessary to spend a ton of money, and I also don't think it's something that you necessarily need because I've had very
very good luck just continuing with my moisturizer and putting that under my eyes. But if I do want to target something specific, then occasionally I will incorporate an eye cream. And at the moment, I'm liking one that has caffeine because it helps to decrease puffiness. And I tend to get a little bit puffy if there's allergies or I've eaten too much salt. And it's something that's really helped me. So I will link the one that I like down below for you. And then once that's done, the last step in my AM routine is sunscreen. I apply sunscreen all over my face, all over my neck, and all over my hands. And if I'm going to be sweating throughout the day, I will reapply, especially during the summer when it's very hot. And then if I'm going to work out in the middle of the day and need to kind of shower and wash everything off, I will do a gentle cleanse and then reapply my sunscreen. Now for my nighttime routine, I do basically the exact same thing, but I will start my cleanse with a double cleanse and I do that to remove all of my makeup. And then after that, I will cleanse like I do in the morning with the same cleanser. And then once that's all done, that's when I go in with my active. At the moment, I'm only using one active in my entire routine. I don't use one in the morning, though I would like to incorporate an antioxidant serum in the morning. But at the moment, my only active is Retin-A, and I use that at night, which is also why I'm so hardcore about sunscreen. And I apply that all over my face and then gently distribute it, and then I apply my moisturizer. And I like it because it has a lot of efficacy behind it, a lot of really great results over many many years and my skin just feels really good there's an adjustment period for sure you'll get flaking and even now i've been using it for a couple months now and i'll still get flaking but it's really good my skin feels really good despite all of that it feels really bright and vibrant and really comfortable so it's really worked beautifully for me but as with everything definitely do your research and see if it's something that you should consider adding into your own routine and then that's it i go to bed occasionally I'll put a lip balm on and then occasionally I'll do maybe some uh, cream or excuse me, some oil under my eyes. I like castor oil for that purpose. And that's only if my skin is feeling particularly irritated or dry as a result of the retin-A. I don't take it all the way up under my eyes, but occasionally it does feel a little bit dry there. So I'll add castor oil, but that's it. Honestly, it's super simple, really easy, a really good routine for me, something that works for my lifestyle and something that has given me very consistent results because even now, even when I occasionally will break out or have maskne like I do now, it heals very quickly because my skin has a routine that's able to keep it healthy and keep my outer layer and all of the things that make up our skin nice and happy and healthy and functioning at their best. So I really encourage you to find a routine like that for yourself. And I hope that this was helpful. Like I mentioned a couple times, I will put everything down below along with all of the people that I find really informative and inspirational in skincare care. And then I would love to know your recommendations. And like always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Have a great day.